Welcome back friends. Now I would be taking you through the world of advertising agencies. How actually advertising world works? Who are the major players? A brief history of advertising agencies. When did it start? How did it start? As per the known records and data, you can you can definitely go for you know different articles and different websites for understanding this and this is really you know fascinating because in due course of time this industry has now become not only a major industry but it is one of those industries which support almost every other business and industry and that is the biggest important you know element of advertising world and then you know we would be looking briefly into what kind of awards are related to advertising world some of the famous campaigns i will name them so that is how you know and, and this can largely be divided into two portions pre internet and post internet kind of so so that is where the biggest demarcation line comes in as far as the ad world goes and you would realize in due course of time that there was uh, uh, there, there was a period when lot many agencies with different functionalities were available in the world some were serving for very specific purpose purchasing you know space and time for clients and some focusing on creatives only some focusing on some research element and you know market research uh, market research element and market uh, you know uh, understanding element and so on and some were focusing on different kinds of functions but in due course of time uh, we will see that whole of this world has consolidated at large and you have four or five larger groups five or six wherein they hold those umbrellas wherein lot many you know different kinds of uh, advertising agencies are under their structure so you see pre internet era ads were delivered to various media outlets through representatives who sold and resold advertising space with a markup so there there, are, there has always been a percentage related to uh, you know agencies and and uh, uh, there are several bodies globally as well as nationally wherein almost all the agencies they become members that is how you assure the credibility of uh, agencies working for different media houses or modes and vehicles as well as customers client side because lots of money gets transacted so so and then lots of issues they come in so uh, you know there are kind of uh, review boards bodies and there are governing councils and bodies somewhere different kinds of countries they have different kinds of structures and william taylor opened his office in london you know today acknowledged as the first advertising agency in history in 1786 and as i told you that you see uh, this was a time when william taylor and his associates or company used to focus on purchase of space or you know kind of where the clients would advertise so that is what main job was they were not involved in uh, creativity part of you know kind of designing the advertisements for that matter although you know it's it's very important for us to realize that creativity has given an impetus and fascination to the advertising world otherwise you would not remember advertisements and if you would not remember advertisements how the response would gen get generated and how the companies would hire advertising agencies so definitely it is there but then lots of lots of negotiations and work goes for as far as hiring the space and you know engaging the space goes so we'll go quickly through these kind of things and there is lot which is uh, there uh, you know in the book as i have referred to and there other sources also so keep referring to those chapters and other sources and you would get lots of insights on how this works and power opened the first agency in american on american soil in 1840 so as i told you uh, when i was talking about the history of uh, advertising in special focus uh, was given on usa so uh, you see when usa 
was going through industrial revolution. So, advertising world in USA grew very fast. Although, as we can see, it started from Europe in 1786. And NW Air and Sun, a prototype of modern media agencies came in, wherein they started focusing on several other functions apart just from negotiations and media buying. So, that is where. And then, for example, pa Palmer used to, uh, you know, uh, purchase space in advance and then used to sell it to the customers, whosoever wanted that. So, it assured business for the, uh, you know, uh, newspapers or, or those kind of uh, uh, modes and then they, uh, they uh, got the money and he used to sell it on premium, uh, getting his own margins. So, there were not several regulations associated with this business earlier, but today you have lots of regulations and governance on this kind of element, what should be the maximum margin, how, how far you can negotiate, what are the, you know, so, so there are several norms uh, which are associated with this. And, you know, before internet agencies were to go to businesses for all offline advertising efforts, and after internet, ad tech companies gained momentum. Now, these ad tech companies, they started focusing on, you know, getting connected with the consumer response in real time. My ad is being seen by someone. What is the response of that person? Is it, is it a, uh, ending up somewhere in immediate search for a particular kind of a product? Or he is passing on that advertisement to someone and who is that customer? You know, I, I can track that customer through some methods basically, some identification marks which I can monitor and, and if the customer is registered with me then I definitely and I have talked about this earlier. So, ad tech companies now, you know, they are precisely focusing on individual customers and their databases and their habits actually. So, they, uh, you know, go through what you are going through as far as their message, uh, you know, different kinds of messages go. And then they uh, keep on customizing the ki uh, kind of messages you would like to have and then they might analyze that where you would end up as far as your purchases go and this data is given to the companies and those companies they start focusing on you as a future customer also. So, a simultaneous response analysis, a simultaneous forecast analysis, forecast based analysis and a simultaneous you know element of uh, uh, augmenting the creativity associated with the message you are being sent is done. So, that is how ad tech world is working and it, uh, it, it is lots of AI and lots of data science is being used and then thanks to engineers and computer science graduates and AI and data scientists being produced by in, uh, institutions like Indian Institute of Technology Roorkee where I am standing at this moment. So, these kind of uh, you know engineers and technologists, they are working day in day out on these kind of things basically. So, you know ad tech companies allow brands to run online advertising campaigns with precise targeting and collect large amount of user data as we have talked about. Now, again looking into the types of advertising agencies, there are integrated marketing agencies. And those integrated marketing agencies focus on solutions instead of service delivery, balance the various tasks and sort the required portfolio works and you know certifications. And you know their main functionality is associated with mul being multi you know disciplinary, wherein you know integration of different marketing functions are the mainstay of as far as then there are specialist marketing agencies. They provide very specific set of services. For example, you know, creatives only, or let's say very specific client-based kind of uh, you know market review. So independent agencies, for example, they work on media buying, and their focus is only on the negotiations with different kinds of modes of media on purchasing the space, purchasing the time, and and uh, you know kind of several other kinds of elements depending upon you know what kind of budget the organization has and we have talked about that uh, earlier as well. There are internet agencies for internet advertising focusing on internet modes only and you see when I say that there are internet agencies that means they are tracking the usage of internet by specific kinds of customers who are being targeted by x kind of a product. So, if you are the marketer and you have a target in mind, you just tell them and they will tell you where your target is 
actually at this moment, what kind of sites they are watching, how to reach to them and that is why they are called internet agencies. So, they, they know how to negotiate with those modes, they will fetch you a price and you can go for that and, and this is a simplistic view, but this is how things are. Business to business advertising agencies are also there. So, just not focusing on consumers, but business to business kind of promotions. So, that is how you know uh, they are divided on the basis of the uh, kind of core services they serve with. In-house marketing agencies have been a mainstay in due course of time all along. Simple reason is when an organization goes grows very big and they are targeting large number of customers and their ad spend is high. So, there are two things they want to not only influence the creatives directly, they want their own team to think creatively about reaching to their target. Definitely they involve external support, but most important is that they want to rationalize their budget and they want to take advantage of the uh, you know margins which would go to other media negotiators. So, they do it for themselves and when we are talking of billions at least millions of dollars or rupees then margins are substantial. So, so that that is where in-house marketing agencies almost all the large organizations they started coming up with their own uh, in-house marketing agencies. Some developed their own, some hired exclusively for themselves. So, so, that is how this, this you know started working and that also supported uh, you know focused understanding of the agencies if they are from outside, but they are serving only one client. For example, BBC creative by BBC content factory by Coca Cola and if I am not wrong Falcon by Hindustan Unilever. So, so they have that and uh, there have been several. You see, then there are global marketing consultancies. Now, what global marketing consultancies they do is that they, you see today you have multinational brands. Almost all the companies who are into business with, with large portfolios or one single product or few products, you know, uh, being marketed around the world. So, they want to have a deeper understanding of the customers everywhere. <coughs> who is going to provide them that? People who understand global markets. There are specific consultancy companies around the world who have that kind of an understanding, knowledge and database. Their teams are working day in day out for these kind of things and that is where you know global marketing consulta uh, consultancy companies come in. They give you a larger understanding and they help you in positioning your products with a customization everywhere in, in this world. For example, KFC might be positioning itself differently in India and their agency would be telling them how to do that. Sometimes if you find a multinational product doing good, very good, you may give some credit to their you know agency and if it is not doing good you may distribute the fault amongst them and their agencies as well. So, that is how things are. There are creative boutiques, small teams including artists, copywriters and designers. They offer creative and artistic services only and focus on development of creative idea into message themes. For example, catchword and you know the naming group and so on. And uh, one thing you, you, uh, you know these creative boutiques sometimes not only are related to developing creatives, but, but they are sometimes many a times specifically associated with the music and jingles you would infuse in advertisements. So, they are serving that purpose as well. Then there are you know digital organizations focusing only on digital media, public relation organizations and then there are social media experts. Now, this has become a very big domain. Probably it would have started uh, you know from uh, somewhere from where in uh, you know one of the individuals like you who is taking this kind of an integrated marketing co uh, communication course gets interested in uh, you know advertising 
and on the other side you are already interested in the usage of social media and you are tracking how people are actually interacting through social media you develop an insight you develop a database use other databases and then you start advising people that is how social media companies they started coming up and large organizations they started taking help of these kind of organizations i remember uh, a very large multinational organization into electronics and uh, you know mobile phone space hired an individual person who was interested in writing blogs for them and then then uh, he was tracking on you know how his blogs are being responded to and this person was specifically hired to support this kind of a thing basically now let's go to another fascinating thing you know global advertising groups wpp martin sorel initiated that in 1971 and their principal subsidiaries are j walter thompson then ogilvy young and rubicam cantar hill and nolton and tempus group and it's as a very large organization and you see wpp's clients they include over 300 of fortune 500 and over half of uh, nasdaq 100 companies and that is in 2001 that is that is the correct data so you see it's it's a big it's a big achievement if you are serving 300 of fortune 500 global uh, fortune global 500 companies and the group has more than 3000 locations in over 112 countries oh, data is huge so so just go through this website and you know their affiliates work with brands such as nestle chanel foxwagon google and facebook very big brands and i told you about a very beautiful campaign recently facebook has thrown in you know th that that is on the web i have told you uh, about that campaign you know puja didi campaign uh, you know uh, few few sessions back so that is working very well and that was covid specific campaign and this is how wpp agencies are you know so just look into this chart you would find ogilvy group m gray group and others and so on and you would uh, know in due course of time if you are further interested in knowing about these uh, organizations working under wpp umbrella you would uh, definitely appreciate that these some of these are focusing on specific tasks as we have talked about so you can correlate these with the uh, you know differentiation which we have gone through in terms of the functionalities of advertising agencies and some of them are full service agencies some of them are specifically you know into creatives largely and some of them are largely into client service and client acquisition and so on and then comes in omnicom it was initiated by maxwell dain in 1944 and look at the revenue in 2020 huge and you see the primary subsidiaries are bbdo das ddb worldwide omnicom media group and tbwa and they have you know 1500 plus agencies associated with them 5000 clients in more than 70 countries and again if you will go into the details of this subsequent chart and you will find individually about these agencies one by one through different you know web sources and their websites you would realize the main functionalities they are going through then again this is publicis and it was initiated in 1926 by marcel bluestein blanchet 9.7 billion euros in 2020 huge bartel bogel hegarty and you can read other names and in several countries publicis group basically has a slight difference as as compared to others in terms of their organization you know they have organized uh, into four parts communications media sapient and publicis health and they have broadly categorized their functionality so this is how they are doing largely leo burnett a very successful agency is associated with publicis 
and Starcom is also there and then you know Publicis Sapient is also there as a part of Publicis Sapient itself. Interpublic group again initiated in 1930 and they have 5 major networks FCB, IPG, Media Brands, McCann a very successful one and others and global revenues again very high. It might you know kind be monotonous if I keep on going on telling you about you know the groups itself, but this is one of the last large groups which I wish to mention Dentsu and it was initiated in 1901. Now one thing which you would realize in common in all the 5 cases is that their history is long. They have gone for large consolidations and they have differentiated themselves into different functionalities serving uh, you know clients almost in totality. So, even if they have they have specific functions per agency, but within internal structure their client enjoys all the facilities and some of their agencies are definitely full service agencies giving all the benefits to all the clients actually. And then you see this is Dentsu basically wherein you know this is their network including 360i, Gravity Media, Postscope and so on. And what are the services largely? Content creation, television advertisements, large ad campaigns, strategic planning, social media management, web development, search engine optimization which is famously called as SEO, radio commercials, graphic designs and several other marketing functions played by them. Now let us with you see just to break the monotony for past 7, 8 minutes I have been talking straight about what are you know these groups basically, but I, I told you because you may dwell and uh, dwell into those further and you know reach to their websites and try to find out what actually they are doing and most interestingly which are the campaigns they are associated with. So, here is a glimpse of you know for example, Ogilvy is associated with Castrols, caring for the real engine, Fevi Quick, very very famous campaign Todo Nahi Jodo and this is huge, this is one of the most wonderful uh, campaigns India has seen, Asian paints Har Ghar Kuch Kehta, I have mentioned about this earlier as well. Ponds Googly Woogly Woogsh was so famous, you know all the young daughters they started you know clipping on the cheeks of their mothers after this advertisement. Gujarat tourism I mentioned in the last section also, Kuch Din To Gujare Gujarat Mein Mr. Amitabh Bachchan the icon and McCann, Happy Dent Palace, Paytm, Sweet Change, Alpen Liebe, very famous that brought in that product to the masses basically and children and adults equally they started liking that product and that is a wonderful kind of an ad story. Leo Burnett, McDonald's, Mac Alu Tikki established that, established Mac Alu Tikki as a very important product in Indian burger scene. Phone pay, Procter and Gamble Shiksha campaign, Mr. Anupam Kher was also seen there, a very renowned film actor of our country. The story of bit to the 75 year old student and Padhega India, Badega India and you see these are some of the famous awards by uh, for in, in the world of advertising basically, Cannes Lions awards then Spice Asia, Clio Awards, D and A D pencils and then EFI Awards, One Club, Pitcher Awards, Young Guns International Award, Shorty Awards and so on. And let me now push on to the last portion of our discussion on as far as agency structures go. You know, this is associated with the range of skills and services which they can offer and it also depends upon the scale of the agency. The larger it is the greater the range of specialist skills it can afford to employ and that is why probably the large consolidation has taken place in terms of these 5 major groups which I have mentioned Dentsu in the last from Japan and you would realize that they have become global in nature 
not only because the companies which they represent have become global in due course of time, but the regions which they are representing have been traversing into you know uh, active globalization participation as well. Plus consumer has been very active in the regions where they have been belonging to. So, so all those things have been uh, you know which we have talked about in terms of history of advertising, history of integrated marketing communication and history of these agencies goes hand in hand. If industrial revolution was coming in 1930s, so 1930s you find you know some of these groups getting impetus and getting going going high, going stronger. And if 1970s in India some of you know uh, things were going on the positive side in terms of economic development, definitely some of the agencies started working on those kind of. So, history of advertising, history of agencies, history of economic development can have a commonality if you will look at it singly and you will watch these you know preceding videos and this one and then collate those things with uh, you know your own understanding and surfing the websites and data you will find about. So, so that that would uh, you know be very fascinating when when we will start working on this and this is a general structural model which talks about where it all you know belongs to. So, just go through this there you have advertisement managers and customer service section wherein creative service and production and you know film and radio and press you know they are associated with advertisement manager and then customer consulting and customer complaining and, and or or let us say you know feedback or, or those kind of things they are associated with this kind of a section. And again these are you know different kinds of structures wherein you know advertising agency they work. So, it is a matrix, mo matrix model wherein you have differentiated functions up till the head of technology and head of production uh, and then from head of client services to creative director or one may play two different kinds of roles and so on. So, these are then there is a pod system wherein you know uh, some organic approach is, is uh, utilized wherein you know uh, these uh, uh, traditional account managers they go for you know uh, kind of specific elements of business planning, creatives and project management. The main objective of this model is to shorten approval process times uh, the, the time which is uh, sorry the time which is utilized in the approval process eliminate extraneous you know lags in as far as the decision making goes and so on. So, so just just to enhance the efficiency of the system there are search engine optimization agencies now and we divided the history of uh, advertising agencies and advertising world into two aspects of internet pre internet and post internet. And here comes a very important role of advertising agencies you may talk you may you may talk about traditional uh, organizational structures or pod systems or whichever way you want to look at it. But, but you know search engine optimization agencies are the mainstay now and they are playing a very vital and important role in due course of time. Wherein website analysis structure optimization, content production, social media management and conversion rate optimization is done. And you see I have been repeatedly talking about that how AI and data sciences are being used here and how direct connectivity with the client and you know analyzing the continuous interaction of the client with the messages you are throwing is being done with uh, as far as such kind of expertise which these agencies they have. So, just surf into those and and keep on dwelling into those and, and uh, we may touch upon these kind of elements later on when we talk about uh, digital modes of advertising and internet advertising as well wherein we would specifically be focusing upon uh, at least for a while on search engine optimization.
Then there are creative agencies, we have talked about this. Our direction is associated with that copywriting, brand design, user design, web design and so on. And then there is an element of video production. You see, at this particular moment I am recording this video for this and video production is associated with, the art of video production is associated with uh, this recording as well. You see, this, this video production involves so many things actually and, and we can talk about it at length, but just to understand you know how to actually work upon efficiently in terms of the copy which has been developed and other elements to record and take you, take those to you. And the last part of it, there are several kinds of organizational structures, but then you know there can be a geographical element to the structure as well. For example, all these conglomerates they have their headquarters somewhere, CEOs sitting somewhere and then they have their regional heads and then they have their sub heads and then they might have their functional heads as well and that is how that whole umbrella works in. So, let me stop here as far as this segment goes. I will be coming back to you with the planning part next time wherein I want you to read that beforehand if you can from the advice sources and I want you to sit on that recording video with an understanding of integrated marketing communication which we have developed till now so that you may have a view of how IMC planning is done. Goodbye for now. Thank you.